Hi, my name is Toki Mikimatsu, and this is my work on object-centric task and motion planning in dynamic environments. Task and motion planning deals with a combination of symbolic and geometric reasoning to produce long horizon plans that are executable by the robot. What does that mean? I'll walk through this example with a robot arm and four environment objects, a table, a large box, a small box, and an L-shaped hook. Suppose we give the robot the goal to place a small box on the large box, but the small box is outside the robot's workspace. By using symbolic reasoning, we could come up with a sequence of symbolic actions that might accomplish the goal, such as pick up the hook, use a hook to push the small box closer, place this hook on the table, and then pick up the small box, and finally place it on the large box. Geometric reasoning helps us plan where to grasp the hook, how close to push the small box, and so on. Task and Motion Planning, or TAMP for short, combines these two modes of reasoning, symbolic and geometric reasoning. The output of TAMP is a trajectory plan that the robot can ultimately execute. Our framework solves the TAMP problem with logic geometric programming, which combines strips planning with nonlinear trajectory optimization. Like most other TAMP methods, logic geometric programming produces joint space trajectories which are valid only as long as the environment is static and perception and control are highly accurate. If something in the environment changes, such as the position of the small box, then the joint configuration for grasping the small box is no longer valid. In these cases, the robot would have to stop and replant, which can take anywhere from several seconds to several minutes. This makes task and motion planning generally impractical to use in the real world. The key contribution of this work is a TAMP framework that optimizes trajectories over object-centric Cartesian frames rather than joint configurations. The plans produced by this framework remain valid even if objects are moving. The plans are executed by reactive controllers that adapt to these changes in real time. This means that we can now do task and motion planning in dynamic environments where perception is inaccurate and control is imprecise. We also demonstrate this working in the real world. Our framework can be split into two stages, planning and execution. During planning, we have a strips planner to do symbolic planning and a frame optimizer to do geometric planning. During execution, we have reactive controllers that can respond to changes in the environment without the need to replan. From here, I'll dive into the details of the planning submodule. The symbolic portion of our framework is formulated as a strips planning problem. A strips problem is defined by five components. First is a set of objects. Next is a set of propositions. These are true false statements that define the properties of all the objects, and the combinations of these true false statements fully describe the symbolic state of the world. Next we have our set of actions, which allow us to move between states. Actions come with preconditions, the set of propositions that need to be true in order to invoke the action, and postconditions, the changes that occur as a result of performing the action. For example, the pick action requires as a precondition that the object we want to pick is in our workspace, and that no other objects are currently in the robot's hand. The postconditions are then that the object we pick is now in the robot's hand, and that it's no longer on whatever surface it was previously on. Finally, we have the initial state and goal state. Given this problem specification, a strips planner needs to search for a sequence of actions that satisfies the goal state. To find such a sequence of actions, the strips planner uses a tree search. The nodes of the tree are symbolic states, and edges are the actions that connect states according to the pre and post conditions. Once the strips planner finds a node where the goal state is satisfied, we take the sequence of actions that lead up to that state, also called an action skeleton, and forward it to the motion planner. The motion planner's job is to fill in the geometric parameters, like where to pick and place objects, and also to check for physical feasibility. Each action skeleton spawns a trajectory optimization problem, where the constraints are determined by the symbolic actions. To ensure that the plan output by the optimizer remains valid, even when the objects move in the environment, we leave continuous dynamics to the lower level controllers and at this stage only consider frames at key time steps, in this case, 
five time steps corresponding to the five actions. To give a sense of what these constraint functions look like, the place action requires that the obstacle we're placing is above and touching the surface we're placing it on, and also that the object's center of mass is above the support area of the surface. We solve this problem using an off-the-shelf nonlinear optimizer, and then return the objective score back to the strips planner, so we can find the action skeleton with the optimal score. In this case, optimal means the end effector travels the least distance. As mentioned before, if we compute the tra trajectory in joint space, we end up with a rigid plan that becomes invalid as soon as something unexpected happens. To avoid having to stop and replan, we instead optimize over relative pose variables. At the most basic level, a manipulation task can be reduced to controlling a point relative to some target frame, like controlling the end effector relative to the box we want to pick up. For the pick box action, we define the pose variable to be the pose at the end effector relative to the box. Once the frame optimizer assigns a value to this variable, it can still be used no matter how the box moves because the end effector will be controlled to maintain its pose relative to the moving box. When we want to place the small box on the large box, the pose variable represents the pose of the small box relative to the large box. In this way, it doesn't matter how we picked up the small box in the previous time step, since what we're controlling is the small box relative to the large box, and the configuration of the small box in the end effector is irrelevant. This means that our pick and place actions are decoupled from each other, and this makes planning over long horizons easier. This Towers of Hanoi demo shows how relative pose variables allow us to plan over really long horizons through the decoupling of time steps. Without decoupling, this would be a difficult optimization problem because the placement of a block early in the plan will affect the rest of the plan. Each of these videos is a candidate solution to the problem, with each optimization solved in less than half a second. Here we go back to the pick and place problem with two candidate solutions shown in the videos. To overview the entire planning pipeline, we first start with the strips planning which produces act candidate action skeletons. Each skeleton gets sent to the frame optimizer, which determines relative pose variables at key time steps, and sends objective score for the action skeleton back to the strips planner. The frame skeleton with the lowest objective score gets sent to the execution module, which will then use reactive operational space controllers to handle changes in the environment in real time. Above the reactive controllers is a path planner that operates at the slower frequency and handles things that reactive controllers may have trouble with, such as obstacle avoidance. Finally, we show our framework working in the real world. We track the poses of objects through a combination of a RUCA marker and 3D point cloud tracking. We use operational space to control the Franka Panda arm with torque control. Here you see me messing around with a robot and objects. Despite the movement of objects and tracking errors of around one centimeter, the robot can still execute the TAM plan with local reactive controllers because it was specified with relative pose variables. To summarize, we have two key contributions in this work. From an algorithmic point of view, we introduce a new trajectory optimization formulation using relative pose variables. This allows task and motion planning to handle dynamic environments where objects are moving and perception and control are inaccurate. From a systems point of view, we implement a system architecture that integrates task and motion planning with perception and reactive control, so that we can now do task and motion planning on a real robot, where the environment state is visually tracked with RGBD cameras. The code is available online on our paper website, which you can access through the QR code or link. Thank you for your attention.